Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and the Homerton Fertility Center. So today uh, we go back to one of the basic questions asked is what happens to large follicles? Do you lose large follicles if you let them go beyond 22 millimeter? Do large follicles contain mature eggs? Or are large follicles cysts with, which have literally outgrown the other follicles and possibly maybe giving rise to clear fluid, which is sometimes seen at oocyte retrieval. So in an original article, what they wanted to see is, does a large greater than 24 millimeter follicle yield a competent oocyte or embryo. So what do we know? We know that ovarian follicles grow at different rates and monitoring and this is usually guided by follicular size. Studies have also shown that follicles that are greater in diameter are more likely to reveal mature oocytes and they have better fertilization and more likely to produce better quality embryos. There seems to be in other studies a comparable fertilization in oocytes between 16 and 22 millimeter and follicles which are between 22 and 26 millimeter. While there were other studies which showed that follicles between 16 and 23 millimeter had a better fertilization rate than follicles from exoptin from follicles of greater than 23 millimeter. But oocyte yield increased in large follicles. So let's look at the background. This group initially also did a study looking at follicle size and oocyte and embryo quality. And what they noticed from that study is that mature oocytes were significantly higher in large more than 16 millimeter follicles and medium 15 to 13 millimeter follicles compared to less than 13 millimeter follicles. And there was no difference noted in fertilization or top quality embryo among the mature oocytes regardless of the follicle diameter they originated. So, and what that study did indicate is that if follicular size, irrespective of follicular size, if it was a mature egg, then fertilization and the ch chance of reaching a top quality embryo are very much similar. So let's have a look at the materials and methods. And these are women undergoing ovarian stimulation uh, between July 2018 and 2019, single center. Up to four leading follicles were present under 24 millimeter and over 24 millimeter. And Oocyte retrieval was done and flushing was done if the, uh, an oocyte was not obtained. IVF and ICSI was done. Top quality embryo was defined on day two and day three. And the primary outcome was number of oocytes retrieved in each follicle. And the secondary outcome was M2 and fertilization rates and total number of top quality embryos. So let's have a look at the results. And the results indicate that if you have a look at the ovum to follicle ratio, larger follicles had a, and were very similar, while the 2p and 2 follicle was again very similar. The top quality embryo to follicle, larger follicles seemed to have a slightly higher incidence of reaching a top quality embryo. And top quality embryo versus 2p and, and again, a large follicles had oocytes reaching the top quality embryo again. So what did this study show? This study showed that uh, oocyte recovery rates were non-significantly decreased in follicles at 24 millimeter and, and more and the ratios of 2pn and total uh, number of top quality embryos was very similar. The association between follicular size and follicular maturity is over three decades old. It's a, it's a very long time since we've been looking at this. And we've generally dictated the time for oocyte retrieval and a trigger as between 17 and 20 millimeter. As in the 
earlier study, a, a large a high recovery rate has been observed in larger follicles. So what, what we take back from this uh, study uh, is that if you just have a look at it and it's a general practice at 18 let's trigger and a few small wells will remain. Uh, and sometimes what you do is you say, oh, let me lose the top few ones and let me continue to push and let me recruit the middle section. And uh, often even patients would ask us this question is, will I lose those follicles? And that's something which is being discussed here. And what this tells us, study tells us, is that large follicles are not sacrificed. You don't lose them. If they're eggs, you, they will continue to be there and they're not sacrificed by letting them develop beyond 24 millimeter. They also yield good metaphase two, uh, two oocytes and the top quality embryos again can come from these oocytes. And that is the learning point which we get from this paper is do, uh, do we lose large follicles by waiting a bit longer so that the others catch up? The answer is no. Do large follicles contain eggs? The answer is yes, they do. Uh, and the proportion may be very similar. And do can they create good quality embryos? And the answer is yes. So next time you go for a collection and you, you see a fo, you know, follicles which have reached 20 millimeter, and one or two and the others are at 16 and 17 millimeter, I'll say push on for another two days. Let those other follicles catch up and you'll not lose the bigger ones. But again, what is the challenge here? As follicles increase in size, your chance of breaking the progesterone threshold, in which is basically increasing your progesterone, tends to start increasing. And especially that happens in polar responders, where you will see larger follicles end up secreting more progesterone. And that's something which we have to tackle. And the second thing which we don't know is that a small number of very large follicles uh, may luteinize and it may luteinize independently of the other cohort which waits for the trigger. And again, I don't know why that happens. I've tried to look into or why that could happen, but I'm not entirely certain about it. So that's some the two things which we may uh, look at and which may affect the way uh, we, we trigger. And I hope that this is something that we take back and when we stimulate the ovaries. Thank you very much.